Greetings in the name of the Most High. I am Brother Spence on this blessed Friday afternoon, the latter hours, approaching the latter afternoon, early evening, so-called Friday evening, going into the blessed eve of the true seven-day Sabbath, that true seven-day Shabbat, or that true seven-day Sabbath, as many will say, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Salam, and Sabbath peace to each and every one. Uh, since I've recorded actual commentary on these Torah portion readings, uh, it's been a few weeks. Unfortunately, uh, recently, I had a penalty on this YouTube channel due to so-called contents of a video I uploaded over two years ago, and all those politics have come and passed, but you still have politics within the lures of wicked Babylon system and the so-called powers that be now through modern day technology in the so-called year 2023 you have your social media your Facebook Twitter YouTube channels so there's certain things we can and cannot talk about in a so-called nation of free speech but that's another topic for another time um, anyways my lady Pamela and I went away on vacation. That's right. We had a wonderful beach vacation at Sandbridge, just south of Virginia Beach, right here in our home state of VA. Had a wonderful time. This very time last week, last Shaboa, we got to see one of the best concerts I've seen in a long time. I got to see my all-time favorite band, Sublime. Or one of my all-time favorite bands. I would say Sublime is at least the top 15, top 20. But I got to see Slightly Stupid, The Movement, which I've seen a couple times already in the past 10 years. Um, we got to see Atmosphere. As many of you know, the underground rapper or the underground lyricist known as Atmosphere. And Charlie Tuna from Jurassic 5 was collaborating with Sublime and slightly stupid and the movement and it was a wonderful show amazing wonderful show and my lady and I had a wonderful time we give thanks that we made it safely back here to run Virginia and this past Shavua I got a new cast on my arm just about two or three days ago I had a checkup or a doctor's appointment at the hospital where I had surgery on my hand about two or three weeks ago. So everything is healing right. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem. So I also did some commentary on a Holy Quran reading. And right when I was about to upload the Holy Quran reading after my recording and study, uh, I found out that I was unable to upload videos on my own YouTube channel for a whole week. But Give thanks, that's come and pass. My lady and I were ready to go on vacation anyway. It was well needed. Anyways, now is the time to grab your Bible scriptures, your Torah scriptures, grab your Bibles and your Tanakhs. For the Torah is simply the first five books of your Tanakh or your Bible. Your modern day Holy Bible, the first five books, also known as the Pentateuch. All due respect. And we see the living word of Ha Elohim, the Allahayim of heaven and earth, the one true living, Ha Elohim, or Eloah, Allah, aka the sacred name, Yahweh, Jehovah, or Yahweh known as Jehovah, or the Most High Jah of creation, that universal father of creation, through many divine-inspired names, through divine-inspired languages, similar Afro-Shemitic roots to these uh, Shemitic languages as well, from the Ethiopic, the Rolamharic, the Aramaic, the ancient and modern-day Masoretic Hebrew, Arabic, etc., etc. So we're going to break this down and let's take more time to meditate. For those that choose to partake, it's not for everyone. All due respect. 
grab your cup of joe, take a sip of water, a sip of herbal tea, a sip of lemonade, fruit juices, a sip of the wine for those that might be drinking in moderation. For those that choose to drink a little, you know, those who choose to drink a little alcohol, I do suggest highly in moderation through self-control. Don't drink too much. To drink a little red wine in moderation is an ancient and modern day Hebrew custom. First century Christian or Orthodox Christian custom in moderation. Capital M for moderation. I cannot stress that enough. Too much drink or too much strong drink and drunkenness is not fit for a king or any fellow righteous man or righteous woman. We shun and burn out drunkenness. Brings out too many bad spirits when ones do not or do not maintain that self-control and balance. The Ruach HaKodesh, as we say in the Hebrew, that set-apart spirit or that true Holy Spirit is all about balance and self-control. That will Memphis Caduce. And those that partake in the herbal meditation, also an ancient and modern day Hebraic custom, the first century fulfilled Israelites in Christ in a messianic sense, you know, a true first century Christian custom as well. And, you know, some fellow Christians and fellow Israelites and other types of Yahudim, you know, some deal with moderation, some do not drink at all. Other types of fellow elect Nazarenes and Nazarites as fulfilled Israelites and true better Christian. Take upon the Nazarite vow, do not drink from the grapevine. Some fellow Rastas and fellow elect Rastafari uh, partake in the smoking of marijuana. Some do not drink at all. Some might drink a little brewski and red wine in moderation. Do not take upon the Nazarite vow. So, mind you, Nazarene and Nazarite is not the same thing. But if you're a true Nazarite, is a faithful Israelite of heart, spiritually, whether ethnic or a spiritual Israelite, ethnic Jew or Gentile, it is ethnic Jew or Gentile according to flesh. Mind you, flesh and blood is still flesh and blood. The Most High, Yahuwah, Jehovah, a.k.a. Eloah, or Allah, a.k.a. the Almighty, Al Shaddai, Ixiavir, the Sustainer, one Almighty God, Ahadu Amlak, His Omnipotence, Almighty Father of creation on this blessed Mother Earth, as above, so below. From within, Eliyai, Selassiei, Adoniyai, Yeshua, I give thanks. Turn in the book of Deuteronomy. That's right. Turn into the book of Deuteronomy or Devarim, as we say Hebraically. Devarim in the Hebrew means words. These are the divine inspired words of Ha Elohim, through Jah Word and Truth, in this great book of life. And the actual Torah, or fulfilled Torah, is the entire Bible, from better sheets, or the book of Genesis, within the actual Torah, to the book of Revelation, and so forth. From the Bible, to the Quran, and so forth. We must put these things in perspective, in that true mind of Mashiach, in that true Christ mind, with that mind of al Masih, that is the true mind of Messiah. In the book of Deuteronomy, or Devarim, chapter 11, beginning in verse 26 through chapter 16, verse 17. This week's Torah portion is titled Re'e in the Hebrew, Re'e, which means to see. We think of Re'e in that connection, both Hebraic and even comedic connections with uh, the Amen Re, Amen Re, Yahweh Yare, Jehovah Jireh. We 
You have the eye of Horus, the eye of Re, the sea, Re'e, in the Hebrew. Mind you, both the ancient and modern day Masoretic Hebrew is an original Afro Shemitic language from its origin. Just like Amharic and the Ethiopic roots stemming back from that pure language of Ge'ez. So we have no time for tribalism and schisms and divisions and well, my language is better than yours, my religion is better than yours. No, we burn that out first and foremost every time. All right, so now for those that choose to partake in the herbal meditation, mind you, even the physical body of flesh and blood, the human bodies are divine temples in the likeness of Ha Elohim. Almighty God and the angels, as above, so below. So there was kind of bush, and that anointing oil, in the original tabernacle, in the temple of ancient Old Covenant times, amongst the ancient and faithful Hebrew Israelites of Hashem's chosen people, that is Jah people on this earth. And now, Yahushua says, that is Yeshua, AKA Jesus Christ, the Messiah, or the Mashiach, and the first advent says, the body is the temple. So let's burn the ancients for those that choose to partake, not just for recreation, but for spiritual purposes. Thanks. Once again, this week's Torah portion reading and meditation is titled Re'e. That means to see. How many of those know the Most High enables us to see? That's right. He enables and allows many of I and I to see spiritually, mentally, removes the spiritual scales and veils over our third eye, the spiritual eye, to re'e, to see that will, that wisdom, salika, that spiritual discernment and wisdom through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, Hashem Yeshua. Let us go to Devarim, Deuteronomy, chapter 11, beginning in verse 26. See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Verse 27. The blessing when you obey the commandments of Hashem, that is the name Yahuwah, Jehovah. Many of your Bible translations into English will say the Lord capital L-O-R-D, the blessing when you obey the commandments of the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, your Elohim, with the Lord, your God, which I command you today. Verse 28. And the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of Hashem, your Elohim, but turn aside from the way which I command you today, and go after other mighty ones, which you have not known. Boss of the cause. It's very simple. From the beginning, go back to verse 26. Thus saith the Most High, Yahweh, with the prophet, See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing when you obey the commandments of Hashem, your Elohim, which I command you today. Verse 28. And the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of Hashem, your Elohim, of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today, 
to go after other so-called mighty ones, which you have not known. And it's other gods. Many of your other translations will read other gods to nothing but false gods, idols, these so-called mighty ones have deep connections with the Nephilim. We read about a few Torah portions ago uh, this past month about the Anakim, Anunnaki, these divine connections. Uh, I should not say divine connections, but uh, more so satanic connections with the fallen angels, the watchers, the Nephilim. In a uh, Islamic sense, we also say jinn. The jinn in Islam, we don't speak of Islamism, but true Islam is a way of life in parallel with the fulfilled Israelite faith, with the true first century pre-Constantine Christian faith or original true Orthodox Christian faith. But we say the Nephilim and the jinn in sort of a uh, Islamic sense, or kind of one in the same, but the Nephilim is more of the hybrid, half fallen angel, the other race of supreme angels that were meant to be the watchers in the beginning, according to Hashem's will. Yes, Yah willing, Jah willing, according to Allah's will or the Father's will. From the beginning, the watchers, just like the other angels, were created to do good. And the other angels are in full reverence in the oneness of Ha Elohim, of the Most High God of creation, the Most High Jah, the heavens above, on the earth below, that most of us cannot even see in this physical realm. But at certain times, Yah willing or Jah willing, Allah willing, they might enable us to see certain ones. And many times they may come in the appearance of an average man, an average fellow human being, you know. So we have to be careful. You know, angels in their origin are usually an average of, you know, 10 to 15 feet tall. So we think about the watchers and this other race of Jen in connection with the fallen ones, that's Ha Shaitan or you know, Satan, that is Ha Satan. In the Hebrew, Satan means adversary. But there were names of the chief Satan, the devil himself, once an angel made out of angelic fire, to also have free will like mankind upon the earth in this physical realm, but chose to fall, be cast down, and deceive the sons and the daughters of man on earth in the likeness of Elohim. That was the penalty of the ancient dragon serpents. Of course, we go back to the original Hebrew language. In the original Hebrew in the book of Genesis, or a better sheet, which means in the beginning, it was the Nahash instead of serpent, as it is translated from English or Salika, you know, from Hebrew to Greek and to English. The original Hebrew word is Nahash, which means enchanter. You know, we think of an enchanter, like an evil wizard, you know, from Lord of the Rings or something like that. So, uh, yeah, we have the chief Satan, or Hasatan, in the book of Enoch, reveals his name, Azazel, or others pronounce Azazel, and the other fallen ones. And we see these connections today through... Traditions of man that acknowledge the names of these so-called mighty ones. So this is a spiritual warfare that goes back to the beginning. In other words, this is old beef that goes way back. Once again, in verse 28, And the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of Hashem, your Elohim, but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other mighty ones which you have not known. Verse 29. And it shall be when Hashem, your Elohim, has brought you into the land which you go to possess, that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal, 
verse 30, are they not beyond the Yarden? Many other translations will say, are they not beyond the Jordan toward the setting sun in the lands of the Canaanites who dwell in the desert plain opposite Gilgal beside the terebinth trees of Moray? Verse 31. For you are passing over the Yarden to go in to possess the land which Hashem, your Elohim, is giving you, and which the name Yahuwah, your Elohim, is giving you, and you shall possess it and dwell in it, and shall guard to do all the laws and right rulings which I am setting before you today. <clears throat> Salika. So we know the previous Torah portion reading. It speaks of the commandments. And we have many different mitzvah, we say Hebraically, but different commandments all throughout the Torah. We have the basic foundation of the main ten commandments that we are meant to focus on first and foremost within the foundation of Jah Torah. We have the ten commandments with the ten words, as we also say Hebraically, the Asadat, the Barim, the ten words or ten commandments. We have other commandments and statutes that we are meant to know of, to strive to love and keep to the best of our ability within this present life. This is not legalism. This is called a basic understanding of scripture. As any true fulfilled Israelite, whether ethnically or spiritually adopted, any true fellow Christian or true Orthodox Christian, Nazarene, fellow Muslim, in the earlier definition of Muslim or Muslim, which means to submit to the will of Al Shaddai or the Most High. So what is his will? Well, all throughout the Quran, for example, it speaks of the foundation of Torah in the Arabic verses as well as the Hebrew. It says we, as the Elohim, or Elohim, God of the angels gave you the Torah and the gospel. Now in that language, it would be Hebrew to Arabic. So beginning with Hebrew, it would be Brahadasha, the Renewed Covenant. But we can say good news gospel. We've given you the Torah and the gospel. Now stop and meditate on that for a few moments. Just think about that for a few seconds. The Torah and the gospel is your Bible. So even the Holy Quran is telling us throughout generations to go back and read your Bible. Misinterpretations through false religion denominations have distorted the pure interpretation and messages of our Heavenly Father's Word. Believe that. This is why the Most High sends other types of messengers and prophets. Yes, other messengers and witnesses and apostles to rejuvenate and revive the pure message of His revelations, His servants, the apostles, and the prophets the disciples and witnesses from the far ends of the earth throughout the generations. Believe that. Yes, we have a choice in this present earth age. We're all individual spirits of free will. As human beings, even some of us, or perhaps many of us, might call ourselves divine beings and the lightness, and that's all good. But if you're in the true lightness, you must have true faith, reverence, and submission, and obedience to the true will of Elohim, the one true and living Almighty God, the omnipotent Almighty One, as above, so below. Because if we don't, you're not in the lightness. You might be physically in the lightness. So are devils and she-devils in the flesh. So is the majority of deaf, dumb, and blind. Come on now would like to rationalize with their words. Oh, everybody's in the image of God. God loves everybody. Well, the, the true living almighty God, Al Shaddai, the Elohim, intends to love everyone. He is the omnipotent creator. There's no doubt about that. He intends for us to get it right. With his love and salvation, even through his tough love and his judgments, to refine us, to correct us, to discipline us, right? We have a choice to choose righteousness 
or unrighteousness. We have a choice to choose life or death. We have a choice in our free will to choose child love and salvation, to love and keep his commandments in order to follow him and the Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, AKA Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior, and advocate to our Heavenly Father and our Elohim. Those penalties, the previous four portion is titled Ekev in the Hebrew, once again, which means consequence. Back to 26. See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. So we choose to receive the blessings or curses once we know. Now, with all that being said, at the same time, I've mentioned numerous times throughout previous video lectures and tour portion studies that we are saved by grace in these present renewed covenant times. Not hyper grace through dispensationalism and schisms. We still burn out those isms and schisms first and foremost every time, but we must grow in grace, saved by Hashem's grace, by Almighty God's grace, in Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, Yeshua in the Hebrew means salvation, translated to Jesus or Isa, in other languages, or Jesus, all due respect. Jehovah's salvation, basic foundation of Jah love, salvation, which is Jesus or Jesus or Yeshua, Yahushua. But through his salvation and grace, you must grow in grace. So this is why I'm putting out these tour portion readings. We have to grow in grace. We can't expect to be born big overnight. Like, okay, I got it, Brother Spence. Yeah, okay, I've already connected all the dots. Thank you, brother. I've already connected all the dots, and I've got the whole thing figured out. I'm ready to keep these commandments and be an apostle. No, no, no. no. Eventually, you will get there. You might be already blessed and, you know, ordained to be what you desire to be. More so what the Father desires for us to be, according to our destiny fulfill our true life purposes as righteous men and women on this earth, as his true children, to be true witnesses and apostles and disciples and prophets and messengers, etc., etc., etc. I we can slow down. Of course, we have to grow in his grace one step at a time. That doesn't mean be still and lean too far right and rely on hyper grace. See, that seems to be the problem. We have what we call today this, um, Salika dispensationalism or dispensation theology. This hyper grace, grace, grace. Oh, I don't have to keep any commandments now. That's Old Testament. Oh, that's this modern day Judaism. Uh, that's for the, the Jewish people or the other Jews. Oh, well, this is for the Muslims. Oh, I can eat what I want to eat. I can do what I want to do. Well, it's technically. Once again, as individual spirits of free will and as human beings in the flesh, uh, technically, yeah, you can. If you make that choice to go out and dig up a, a old crocodile that had been hit by a Big Mac truck on the side of the road and cook it up on the fire and have roasted crocodile for dinner, you make that choice. Is it kosher? Is it necessarily good for your body? Probably not. Will it save your life if you're starving to death? Probably so. So there's pros and cons to everything. But you have to think, okay, we're taught lies through organized religion, through all these false religions in the earth, and all these isms and schisms. There's consequence to our choices and actions. Is it a salvational thing? Does it override you know God's grace or you know Hashem's grace through Messiah or through Jesus Christ? No. The blood of Jesus Christ? No, it's not going to override the blood of the covenant through God's love and salvation and through his power. Is it a salvational issue if you, if you did it by ignorance because you were lied to? No, that's why we're saved by grace. But if you know better, we're meant to grow in grace. Now we live to be set apart because there's still a kev, a consequence. Eating abominations, 
so-called meats that are not kosher, not clean. You know, it might save your life if you're in the desert, parched, and starving to death. But it's not good to eat on a regular basis or even at all if you know better. If you have access to other foods like vegetables and fruits and kosher meats for those that choose to eat meats. Right here in the foundation of the Torah, in the Bible, that both the Bible and the Quran speak of. Might shorten your lifespan, give you high blood pressure, and health issues. There's a consequence to everything. So the Most High Yahweh says, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Verse 27, once again, the blessing when you obey the commandments of Hashem, your Elohim, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of Hashem, your Elohim, or turn aside from the way, the straight and narrow way, which I command you today, to go after other mighty ones which you have not known. 29. And it shall be when Hashem, your Elohim, in the name Yahuwah, Jehovah, your Elohim, has brought you into the land which you go to possess, that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Verse 30. Are they not beyond the Yarden for the setting sun in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the desert plain opposite Gilgal beside the terebinth trees of Moray? Verse 31. For you are passing over the Yarden to go in to possess the land which Hashem your Elohim has given you, and you shall possess it and dwell in it. Verse 32. And shall guard and keep all the commandments. You shall guard to do all the laws and right rulings, which I am setting before you today. Say la. Chapter 12. Thus saith the Most High, Yahweh, these are the laws and right rulings which you guard to do in the land which Hashem, with the name Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers, is giving you to possess all the days that you live on the soil. Pause for the cause. But you're thinking, Brother Spence, already just got into the first verse of chapter 12. But mind you, when it says, as it is written, throughout the Torah, and all throughout the Bible scriptures, of course, from Genesis to Revelation and so forth, when it speaks of the land in these present renewed covenant times, now through HaMoshiach, through the Messiah, the anointed Christos, that is Christ, both in the first and second advent, as the one true King of Kings, now, wherever we live on the face of the earth, on the far ends of this blessed mother earth, of the Father's creation, we dwell in that good land. That good land, we also say, Hebraically, Topia. Topia. Ethiopia. That metaphysical and spiritual promised land, which is a state of mind, as above, so below. Regardless of where we live, it could be in actual Judeo-Christian Ethiopia, the New Zion, the true African Zion, in the capital. It could be in Aksum or Saudi Arabia or Japan or Canada or right here in America where I and I live, right here at the core of daughter Babylon, these last of last days the Far East, or right here in this Western Hemisphere, in the North Country, so-called North America, South America, Australia, wherever we live, physically and geographically. In our humble abodes, we live in sukkahs or huts or tents or houses or duplexes, apartments, campers, trailers, that is our topia our metaphysical promised land, whatever physical land that we own, a front yard, 
a side yard, a backyard, the inner cities and the counties and the country, on the grid, off the grid, that is our spiritual and metaphysical slice of Mount Zion, that is our good land. So to live both spiritually and physically or literally on the earth in safety is to love and keep Yahweh's commandments. Love and keep Jehovah or Almighty God's commandments. That is our Heavenly Father's commands and statutes. In order to follow Him and to follow Yahshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, not Antichrist Jesus. We burn out the Antichrist Jesus with the true Christos, with the true anointed Christ, Jesus, a.k.a. Yahshua, Yahweh salvation, Yahshua, the one who took upon the flesh as Messiah in the first advent, to be the one true prophet of all prophets, the supreme angel of the name Yahweh, Jehovah, or Yahweh incarnate, as the Son of Man, the Ben Elohim, the Son of God, the anointed Christos, or Christ, you know, the anointed Messiah, as that suffering servant, out of pure love and compassion, to be that final sacrificial lamb, that final Passover lamb, to bring fulfillment to the Torah and the prophets. It's one testament that fulfilled Israelite faith of the Nazarene, the first Nazarites, first century true Christians, and original Orthodox Christians, as fulfilled Israelites and fulfilled Messianic Yahudim, beyond the so-called boundaries of lineage or skin tone. However, there is a kingdom order, a kingdom, first of the ethnic Yehudi, or ethnic Israelites of the 12 tribes, then to the righteous Gentiles, be fellow born again, adopted Israelites as proselytes, as the Goyim, as the stranger amongst you to be adopted of faithful Israel. Now today, that core body of Messiah, that true core body of Christ, is of Israel. See, now you have all these politics, too much she said, she said, too many ism and schisms, creating tribalism, fighting over religion, fighting over the so-called promised land, that little strip of land that's only part, that little strip of land, it's a postmodern day Israeli state is only part of that geographical promised land given to the seed of the great prophet Abraham. Many others call Ibrahim or the great prophet Abraham through Yitzhak and Yaakov, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even to bring blessings to the other seed of Abraham through Ishmael. The far ends of the earth, all nations of all people. So if we're too caught up in tribalism and schisms and it becomes a racial thing or a nationality thing and a bias thing, and here we go. As of right now, you still have lots of tension building up in parts of the Middle East, in the modern day so-called Israeli state. You now tension with Lebanon, a little tension with Iran, joining forces with Russia. They've been joining forces with Russia, China, North Korea. We know that prophecy in both the Bible and the Quran concerning Persia and parts of what is identified today as Iran or Iran. And that connection with Russia, kind of scary. But the true Zion, the true Mount Zion in these present renewed covenant times, is a state of mind for I and I and we. Go to Revelation, go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 17. Those who strive to love and keep the commandments of Ha'alohim, the true living God Almighty, as our Father, and hold the true testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and the first advent. And many of I and I acknowledge the second advent to his majesty as the one true king of kings, but also rightfully take upon that new name, that precious name, and the brother Mark Tong, thanks. Many are called, but few were chosen. So, with all that being said, once again, chapter 12, thus saith the Most High Jah, these are the laws and right rulings 
which you guard to do in the land which Hashem Elohim, which the name Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers is giving you to possess all the days that you live on the soil, on the earth. Verse 2. Completely destroy all the places where the nations which you are dispossessing serve their mighty ones, their false gods and their idols on the high mountains and on the hills under every green tree. Verse 3. And you shall break down their slaughter places, their altars, and smash their pillars, and burn their asherim with fire. You shall cut down the carp images of their mighty ones, that is, their mighty ones, and destroy their name out of that place. So again, this is old beef, going back to the beginning, before the first earth age, with this first world age, as it is written, in the beginning, better sheets in the book of Genesis, also in the Quran, in the beginning. So, my suggestion is some of these terms that I'm reading, ones might ask, well, Brother Spence, what is Asherim? I don't have that in my Bible. My English translation of my Bible has no word that spells Asherim or ashram and many don't you know ones might say or other bible translations you know from ancient hebrew and greek to english might say something else but if ones really want to spark an interest to seek knowledge as we should as we grow in grace through jah's grace through god's grace in yeshua or jesus christ Messiah, we must grow in grace. We do grow in grace. And look up Asherim. I'm not going to spell it out. There's many past uh, video lectures and Torah portion videos I've done over two or three years ago that I have spelled out the definition of Asherim. I'm going to say if ones are interested, as you should be, or somewhat curious, as you should be, Pause the cause, stop the video, and Google, if you so choose to, feel free to Google Asherim, that is capital A-S-H-E-R-I-M. I'll leave it at that, because there's too many modern-day translations, there's too many modern-day uh, traditions, should I say, so-called traditions of man that are so ingrained in our psyche, in today's society and all throughout the world, it's not just one country, all throughout the world, there's, there's so many, he said, she said, and traditions of man that we've been taking part in, we've been lied to from the very beginning before our birth and our, our upbringing as children. So a lot of it's not our fault. And I'm doing this because I feel like now when other people are tuning in to my video lectures and studies, uh, they become offended, become too easily offended. And when you're too easily offended, one's shut down, say, oh, you're judging me. You think you're better than me. But the answer is no, brother, no, sister. I do not think I'm better. No, I, I'm only sharing knowledge. So if ones choose to go there, and if ones are not ready, if ones decide to look up Asherim or something else, or any kind of Baal worship, or, you know, any kind of Baal worship, or idol worship from ancient times to present times. You know, take time to meditate and pray about these things. And grow in grace. Will these things hold you back if you're not ready to give it up? Like, oh, Brother Spence, I kind of feel a little convicted now that I've done some research and prayed about it. Feel a little conviction of the Holy Spirit through Christ. But I'm not, I don't know, my wife's going to be tripping. Uh, I still live with my wife. You know, wives that, you know, maybe some righteous sisters out there have eyes to see and your husbands are still kind of headstrong with the old traditions. And you have kids, you already have children that you've been raising. It gets kind of messy. 
oh, we've been celebrating this for years with the children. It depends on, it depends on so many things. It depends on what age the children are. Are they grown? Are they young adults? Are they out of the house? So yes, it may take a few months to a couple years, five to 10, 15, 20 plus years. And so this is why I emphasize Salika. <clears throat> This is why I emphasize so much the term, we must grow in grace. We must grow in grace. And I'm not trying to preach at anybody. I'm simply reading the scriptures of our Heavenly Father's word in this Torah of life. These first five books of this Bible and our Heavenly Father's word. Right? I'm going to put that out there. But it does say, once again, Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, and you shall break down their slaughter places, and smash their pillars, and burn their asherim with fire, and you shall cut down the carved images of their mighty ones, that is their idols, their gods, which are false gods, and shall destroy their name out of that place. They have the affiliation with the fallen angels of Hasatan and the demons and the fallen ones. Verse 4. Do not do so to Hashem, your Elohim. Do not do so to the name Yahweh, Jehovah, your God. Verse 5. But seek the place which Hashem, or which the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, your Elohim, chooses out of all your tribes to put his name, to put his Shem there for his dwelling place. And there you shall enter. Pause for the cause real quick. Let's take a meditation break. But what does this mean? This, this means that, once again, in these present renewed covenant times, through Messiah, or through Christ, many others say, through his majesty, the one true king of kings in Christ, acknowledging both advents of Messiah, all due respect, that's fine. But we must be born again in these present renewed covenant times. We must be born again or begotten again through Teshuvah, repentance, receiving the renewed covenant, the Brahadasha, that basic good news of Yeshua or Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that is Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, so let's take time to meditate in His Majesty's Christ. See His Majesty both in his divinity and humanity as the king of kings, the true Christian man. Let's meditate on these things. Okay, that metaphysical Zion in your dwelling place. But also outside of your humble abode, you have the stomping grounds, your hometowns, your occupations, your workplaces. This does not mean that I should go to work in December, just a few months from now, in the month of December, rhetorically speaking, of course. In the late fall or early winter season, I start setting Christmas trees. <laughs> I think I just blew my cover. Setting, you know, Christmas decorations and all this commercialism of, you know, Santa Claus and so-called Christmas trees on fire. That's not what, what the scripture is saying to apply that in present renewed covenant times in today's society. Um, don't do that. <clears throat> um, but this is your dwelling place as far as that's when you cope with the Babylon system. And it takes a lot of extra grace in these renewed covenant times to Hashem's grace. Through the Most High Jah's amazing grace, Ba'asham Yeshua HaMashiach, with His Majesty and Yeshua HaMashiach, to apply that spiritual Tai Chi, you know, and, and go to our occupations, and sometimes you've got to just bite your tongue and, you know, just pick your battles. That's true righteous liberty when it comes to good faith. These are things we learn on this narrow path as we grow in grace. Over the years, we begin to grow in grace in Messiah, you know, through his majesty in Christ. And so we begin to capitalize, receive these higher levels of, of understanding 
or things that elevate to that higher understanding and ultimately the proper understanding of the overall situation. So don't be fanatical. Don't be an actual legalist or extremist. However, at the same time, you feel like you've grown to a level of grace through Hashem salvation, through, through God's salvation in Messiah, our personal dwelling places, our humble abodes, our houses, apartments, duplexes, whatever, sukkahs, should not have such things. You don't have to cut them down literally or physically or set anything on fire, that spiritual fire in the Christ mind, you burn fire, and you, and you don't direct or put up anything that's dealing with idol worship or regarding the other mighty ones so-called mighty ones of other nations. You must know, as true born-again Christian, if I can say Christ man or Christian, in Sanskrit, little Christ or anointed ones. And as true Muslims, we submit to the will of the Most High. As true Christians, we are Christ men. We're anointed because we submit to the will of the Most High. We are faithful, we praise Ha'alohim, the Yehudis, as two faithful Jews, whether ethnically, spiritually, metaphorically, the you know, Yehuda is one who praises Ha'alumim, who praises God. You know, there's different different uh, definitions of what is a true Christian. You know, what is a true Christian? What is a true faithful Jew or a faithful Israelite or a faithful Muslim or a, a true Buddha or a Buddhist? A Buddha is an enlightened one. So if we're walking with the Most High, we are enlightened ones, we're christened, we're anointed, we're Christ men, we're God men, we're, we're all the above. And this is how the dark side of organized religion causes division. You know, these other tribalism and schisms creep in. We don't want that. Okay, the term Muslim, Muslim, Christian, after the term Israelite or Yehudi, became popular because one who submits to the will of the Almighty is anointed and set apart. The chosen ones who praise Elohim. It's all one definition. So, with that being said, all right, so once again, once again, Verse 4 says, Do not do so to Hashem your Elohim. Verse 5, But seek the place which Hashem, with the name Yahweh, Jehovah, your Elohim, chooses out of all your tribes to put his name, to put his Shem there for his dwelling place, and there you shall enter. Boss of the cause. You shall enter your humble abode. I hope that your houses and your apartments and duplexes and little campers and RVs and whatever you might live, wherever you might live or dwell in, even a tent in the backyard or a sukkah, I hope that it is also the dwelling place of the Most High. If you're there, if I and I and we dwell in our humble abodes and our safe havens, the Most High Yahweh, Jehovah, Emmanuel, aka Eloah, Allah, and His angels and His presence. The Holy Spirit should be with you, should be with I and I, and we, and our humble abodes. This is how you digest the Hebrew Scriptures, that true Christ mind, that true mind of Messiah. Verse 6, and there you shall take your ascending offerings and your slaughters and your tithes and the contributions of your hands and your vowed offerings and your voluntary offerings and the firstlings of your herd and of your flock. First fruits of your income, whether you work for yourself, that's right, whether you work for yourself or someone else, work a government job, off or on the grid, physically, geographically, 
That is our tithes. I and I don't go to church. Every once in a while, I might visit a Christian church. All due love and respect. If it's a halfway decent Christian church, to meet people for worship and good fellowship. It's <clears throat> illegal. But on a regular basis, my church, we use words like church, which is assembly. It's with I and I and we. Even, even must I express in my own solitude, my own privacy, in my own humble abode. Emmanuel is with I and I, with his Holy Spirit, that Ruach HaKodesh, Bahasham Yeshua, even more so through his majesty, the one true king of kings in Yeshua HaMashiach, or through Jesus Christos, regarding Messiah, my blessed Lord and Savior, both in the first and second advent, as the one true king of kings, to also rightfully take upon that new name, to rightfully take upon that new name, that precious name, the brother of our tongue. It was worthy to open the book of the seven seals thereof. Why? The first advent what was sacrificed, slaughtered, out of pure love and compassion for I and I and we, for mankind, throughout the generations. Don't forget that. That is the first fulfillment, that first original fulfillment of Jah Torah and the prophets. So, once again, your sacrifices, your offerings, your daily supplications, your daily prayers and meditations through teshuva, as we also say in the Hebrew, teshuva, or metanoia in the Greek, which means repentance, with daily prayers, we should take that time to meditate, to discipline ourselves, Meditate and pray at least three to five times a day, if not more. Chant the Psalms. Every prayer throughout an average daily cycle doesn't have to be a long prayer, mind you. Reading some verses in your Bibles, in your Torah scriptures, a chant the Psalm, read from the Quran. Verse 7, and there... You shall eat before Hashem, your Elohim, and shall rejoice in all that you put your hand to, you and your households, in which Hashem, with the name Yahweh, Jehovah, your Elohim, has blessed you. So once again, boss the cause. Take a little more time to meditate and digest these verses, these divine inspired scriptures within that true mind of Messiah, with that true Christ mind. All the work we put in today, whether we live on or off the grid, in the city, in the counties, in the countries, whether we work for somebody else, whether we work for ourselves and have our own business, our own trade, whatever it might be in these present renewed covenant times, or even a government job in the city, I and I still live set apart through faith and righteous liberty. Yes. Give thanks and praise. All right, so back it up once again in verse 6. And there you shall take your ascending offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and the contributions of your hand, your belt offerings your voluntary offerings, and the first things of your herd and of your flock, your tithes, whether you go to a church, synagogue, mosque, for good causes, for missionary, and helping people, and blessing people, and need, those victimized of poverty, victimized through floods and natural disasters, to go to places in your hometown, or other countries, other nations, are all good things. Major part of job works. It was legit. Many churches, some of the smaller churches do that. And their tithes and offerings they collect from the people go to the right places. Some embezzle a little too much. Some of these false pastors and false Christian priests. Not all. But there are many out there. You shall know them by their fruits. 
You shall know them by their fruits, thus saith the Most High Yahuwah, the Most High Jah, through Christ Yeshua, the Son. Verse 7. And there you shall eat before Hashem your Elohim, and shall rejoice in all that you put your hand to, you and your households, and which Hashem your Elohim has blessed you. Verse 8. Do not do as we are doing here today, each one doing whatever is right in his own eyes. Verse 9, because you have not yet entered the rest in the inheritance which Hashem, your Elohim, is giving you. Verse 10, but you shall pass over the Yarden, that is passing over the Jordan, and shall dwell in the land which Hashem, your Elohim, which the name Yahweh Jehovah, your God is giving you to inherit, and he shall give you rest from all your enemies round about, and you shall dwell in safety. Amen and amen. Rest from all your enemies, both in spirit and in flesh. La Lucha. Okay. Verse 11, and it shall be that unto the place which Hashem, your Elohim, chooses to make his name dwell there, there you are to bring all that I command you, your ascending offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and the contributions of your hands and all your choice offerings which you vow to Hashem, vow to the name Yahweh, Jehovah, make a vow to the Most High Jah. Verse 12, and you shall rejoice before Hashem, your Elohim, you and your sons and your daughters and your male servants and your female servants and the Levites who is within your gates, since he has no portion nor inheritance with you. Pause for the cause. So, your slaughters or your sacrifices in these present renewed covenant times through Messiah, mind you, <clears throat> our sacrifices, our slaughters in renewed covenant times through Christ Yeshua, through his majesty, the King of Kings in Christ Yeshua, is our daily meditation, our daily prayers. The supplication, the daily teshuva, and his daily repentance. We take that time to meditate and pray at least three to five times a day, whether it's internal breathing meditation, verbal, spiritual, you know, repentance, the prostration to the earth. Sometimes I and I stand before the king and the king of all kings. Before Almighty Al Shaddai, give praise. So those are our daily sacrifices and slaughterings. Our tithes, once again, the ones that choose to go to a decent, legit Christian church. Not these false Christian churches, but a halfway decent, if not good, Christian church. Or a genuine synagogue or mosque or temple. And you know the tithe money is going for a good cause. That's good. That's where your tithe must go. Y'all willing. God willing. However, to speak for myself and many others, once again, I don't normally go to church on a regular basis as far as an organized Christian church or gathering. But... Many of the first fruits, that 10% first fruits of my income, through Yahweh's grace, through the Most High Jah's amazing grace, Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, I give thanks. Many of my uh, first fruits of my income, my bi weekly paycheck for my government job, I set aside to go into money to buy care packages and food and pocket Bibles for the homeless, 
the project that a fellow born again brethren in Christ and a good friend of mine have talked about, you know, for a while. So that can be and should be your tithes and offerings to carry out job works or through whatever method, whatever method that may be. Once again, it shall be unto the place, whatever place that might be, whether ones go to church or not, which I shun with the name Yahweh, Jehovah, your Elohim chooses to make his name dwell. Once again, I hope your humble abodes and your own dwelling places where you rest your head on a regular basis as the presence of Emmanuel and the angels there. Whichever Ha'alohim chooses to make his name or to make his shun dwell there, there you are to bring all that I command you, your ascending offerings, your slaughters, your tithes, and the contributions of your hands, and all your choice offerings which you vow to Hashem. Verse 12, and you shall rejoice before Hashem, your Elohim, you and your sons and your daughters, and your male servants, and your female servants, that is hired employees, if you have your own business, not slavs, that slav, or the term slave was inserted to many false interpretations and mistranslations from the original Hebrew, even the ancient Greek to so-called English, outside of the original King James Bible, or the original Hebraic translations more than original Hebrew Bible or Ethiopian Bible also written in the Amharic the get is more of that pure language right the Hebrew says your male servants and female servants your employees and the Levites who is within your gates since he has no portion nor inheritance with you but well, your portion is your ties to the father to Al Shaddai and to the Kohen Gadol, that is Jesus Christ, aka Yahshua HaMashiach, the ultimate high priest, as our blessed Lord and Savior, and advocate to our Heavenly Father and our Elohim. Amen. This is how you properly digest the Hebrew scriptures in that true mind of Messiah, or within the true Christ mind. Verse 13, guard yourself that you do not offer your ascending offerings in every place that you see. Verse 14, accept in the place which Hashem chooses in one of your tribes. There you are to offer your ascending offerings, and there you are to do all that I command you. Your ascending offerings or other things and praises, meditations. Verse 15, only whatever your being desires you shall slaughter, sacrifice, and eat according to the blessing of Hashem, your Elohim, which he has given you within all your gates. The unclean and the clean do eat of it, of the gazelle and the deer alike. That means people of the clean or unclean eat the gazelle, the deer, which are kosher, animals that is kosher meat for those that choose to eat meat mind you verse 16 only the blood you do not eat pour it on the earth like water verse 17 you are not allowed to eat within your gates the tithe of your grain or of your new wine or of your oil or the firstlings of your herd or your flock or of any of your offerings which you vow or of your voluntary offerings, or of the contribution of your hand. Right? Verse 18. But eat them before Hashem, your Elohim, before the Lord your God, in the place which Hashem, your Elohim, chooses, you and your son, and your daughter, and your male servants, and your female servants, and the Levites, who is within your gates, and you shall rejoice before Hashem, rejoice before the name Yahuwah, Jehovah, your Elohim, in all 
and you put your hands to. And in today's presence, renew covenant times through Messiah, through Christ, through His majesty in Christ. All we put our work to. Our day jobs, our occupations. Once again, whether we physically or geographically live on the grid, off the grid, despite the lures of Babylon system, the COVID Babylon is still be set apart. Verse 19, guard yourself that you do not forsake the Levite as long as you live in your land. Old covenant times, you had the Levites, the blessed tribe of Levi, which the high priests, the Kohanim, the first anointed Christ, we talk about more of an original, authentic Hebraic sense, Christ, or anointed one, was Aaron, the biological brother of the great prophet Moshe. Was Aaron, the first anointed Christ, high priest. So the blood of the covenant back then was the precious sacrifice of innocent kosher mammals, clean mammals without blemish, prophetically and spiritually foreshadowing Hamoshiach in the first advent, that is the anointed Christos or Christ as the Messiah, to be the one true prophet of all prophets, Amosi, in the first advent, and the suffering servant, the one true rabbi of all rabbis, the one true imam of all imams and priest of all priests, the ultimate calling a door or high priest is the Lamb himself and Messiah himself as our Lord and Savior, took upon the flesh of man. The beginning was the Word. The Word was with Ha'alohim. The Word was Elohim, the supreme angel of the name Yahweh, Jehovah. The supreme angel named Yahweh, or the angel of the presence, incarnate. The Word became flesh, lived amongst us, in that first incarnation, in that lineage of Yehuda that anointed tribe of Judah, the lineage of anointed kings of Israel. And then we have Levi, the anointed high priests, right? Do not neglect in these present renewed covenant times, both the humanity and divinity of Yahshua HaMashiach, AKA Jesus Christ, AKA the Yesos Christos, AKA Isa, the great prophet that just so happened to be the one true prophet of all prophets and Mashiach or Amosi before the great prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, all due love and respect. See, yeah. even the Quran speaks of Isa or Jesus, aka Yahushua or Yeshua, more than just about any other prophet, as it speaks of in the Bible as well. Do not neglect the ultimate Levite, the high priest, the king of kings, as Messiah, both in the first and second advent of his majesty, especially the first advent of Christ or Amoshiach. Do not neglect Yeshua or Jesus Christ. It is a commandment, not an option to repent and receive the renewed covenant. As we should say in the Hebrew, the Brahadasha, but or Hadith Kedan, but it is the acceptance of Yeshua or Justice Christ, not Antichrist Jesus. We burn out that Antichrist Jesus every time. The true, anointed, original, true Christ Jesus, whose name is Yeshua, Yahushua HaMashiach, that is Yahweh salvation, Jah salvation, Allah salvation. To accept that basic good news gospel. And these present renewed covenant times is a commandment through tashuva, repentance, or metanoia, as we also say in the Greek, you know, metanoia, re repentance. Verse 20. When Hashem, your Elohim, enlarges your border as he has promised you, and you say, let me eat meat, because you long to eat meat, you eat as much meat as your being desires. Verse 21. When the place where Hashem, the Elohim, is the name Adonai or the name Yahuwah, Jehovah, 
your God chooses to put his name is too far from you, then you shall slaughter from your herd and from your flock, which Hashem has given you, as I have commanded you. And you shall eat within your gates as much as your being desires. Pause for the cause once again. Put this in proper reading comprehension, as we all should. For those that choose to eat meat, not for those who have taken upon a certain Nazarite vow, you know, as a true Nazarite must also be a Nazarene, you know, but as a fulfilled Israelite or a faithful Israelite or Yehudi or a true Christian, you must be a Nazarene. But at the same time, for those that also take upon the Nazarite vow, they stay away from the fruits of the grapevine, not too much strong drink, they grow out their locks, and the vegan lifestyle, might I say, the vegan lifestyle or vegetarian liberty is not a bad thing. It's a very healthy diet, but it is not a requirement even of the Nazarite vow necessarily. Be strictly vegan about everything when it comes to idol liberty, that idol diets that many other types of fulfilled Nazarenes and fulfilled Israelites, both ethically, spiritually through Christos, as fellow Christians and Orthodox Christians who are of the elect Rastafari, those who get into uh, the Pan African consciousness as well, you know, Kemetic and Biblical consciousness combined. But there are different dimensions of fellow other Rastafari, amongst other types of fellow, you know, ethnic and spiritual Israelites of faith in Messiah, and other types of Christ men and Christian. So let's not judge each other. Let us not judge each other based off what one eats or choose not to eat or drink. But right here, thus saith the word, thus saith the Most High, Yahweh, Jehovah. Those that choose to eat meat, through Jah word and truth, through Jah Torah of life, he gives us basic guidelines and instructions and commandments for those that choose to eat meat. And yes, I and I speak for myself. I do eat meat. And I deal with Christ man consciousness as a true Christian spiritually, not so much religiously, more spiritually as a cryptic Muslim slash Christian slash fulfilled Israelite, you know, because as true Christians, we are really fulfilled Israelites in Christ, the Messiah. Um, that is our true spiritual identity according to what the Bible says. I'll say it again one more time. <clears throat> that is our true spiritual identity according to the Bible, the Messiah. Connection with both ethnic and spiritual Israel, the true repentant, faithful remnant of ethnic and spiritual Israel in the body of Christ, the body of Messiah. So anyways, with that being said, with all that being said, verse 21, when the place where Hashem, your Elohim, chooses to put his name is too far from you, once again, then you shall sacrifice from your herd and from your flock, which Hashem has given you, as I have commanded you, and you shall eat within your gates as much as your being desires. Yahweh is merciful. Most High Jah is merciful. Verse 22. Only as the gazelle and the deer are eaten, so you are to eat of it. The unclean and the clean alike eat of it. Verse 23. Only be strong not to eat the blood, for the blood is the life. Do not eat the life within the meat. Also the cause, once again, so even if it's kosher meats like beef, chicken, fish, lamb, that's all good. Those of I and I who choose to eat meat, the foundation of Jah Torah, Jah's commandments, his basic guidelines and instructions tell us what we are able to eat if we choose to eat meat along with vegetables and fruits on this earth. All right? Let's not get legalistic about that. Don't be a Pharisee. 
even a Rasta Pharisee. He'll be like, oh, my you know, you did, you, you know, you're eating all the debtors and eating all the dead animals. You're not supposed to. A lot, a lot of prestige has crept into these movements, which are not bad things. Once again, I stress vegan diets and vegetarian diet is even more healthy. I, I encourage, I, and I encourage ones to go for a vegan diet. Let's not be Pharisees, even if one is not applying the basic food laws according to the Bible or the Quran or Torah, you know, they're still eating pork. We love them in grace. We all must grow in grace. Don't forget that. Don't want to be hypocrites. We're not called to be religious hypocrites and Pharisees and legalists. Although when I speak of these things and actually read from the Torah, I might sound like a legalist to those who are leaning too far right into dispensationalism, schism. Well, let's focus on what the word of Elohim says. Verse 23, once again, only be strong, do not eat the blood, for the blood is the life. Do not eat the life with the meat. So to speak for myself, on a rare occasion, if I go out to a steakhouse, most of the time when I choose to eat meat is chicken or fish, but if I have a steak on a rare occasion, once or twice a year, or whatever it might be, I tell them medium well. Get the blood out. Now, don't be over legalistic about it, but just it still tastes good. You know, a little protein is good for the body. All right, but make sure it's cooked medium well, if not well done, because you don't want to eat too much blood. It's not good for you. Do not eat it. Pour it out on the earth like water. Verse 25. Do not eat it that it might be well with you and your children after you, when you do what is right in the eyes of Hashem. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Only the set apart gifts which you have and your vowed offerings you are to take up and go to the place which Hashem chooses. Verse 27. And you shall make your ascending offerings, the meat and the blood on the slaughter place, of Hashem, your Elohim, and the blood of your altar is poured out on the altar of Hashem, your Elohim, and then you eat the meat, if you so choose. Verse 28, guard and obey all these words, which I command you, that it might be well with you and your children after you forever. When you do what is good and right in the eyes of Hashem, in the eyes of the name Yahweh Jehovah, your Elohim. Verse 29. When Hashem, your Elohim, does cut off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land. Verse 30. Guard yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire about their mighty ones their so-called mighty ones, saying, how do these nations serve their mighty ones? And let me do so too, as well. Verse 31. Mm. Do not do so to Hashem, your Elohim, for every abomination which Hashem hates, they have done to their mighty ones, that is their gods, which are nothing but false gods and idols. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire to their mighty ones, their idols. All the words I'm commanding you, guard to do it. Do not add nor take away from it. Also for the gods, just finished up with chapter 12, Deuteronomy. But let's go back to verse 31 once again. abominations of people burning their sons and daughters in the fire to their so-called mighty ones, that connection with the fallen angels of the Jen, the Watchers, also recorded in the book of Enoch, the parts of the Bible, the Quran, the connection with the Watchers, the Jen, we say once again, 
from a uh, Islamic perspective, the Jinn, another set apart race of angels made from angelical fire in this vacated space, as we also say Kabbalistically or metaphysically, this vacated space we know as the universe, our present universe or galaxy. So we have a certain distance from Elohim, of which like the sons of men, like the sons and daughters of Elohim, created from the dust of the earth, known as mankind, created from the dust of the earth and our physical bodies in this physical realm, we are in the image of Ha Elohim, right? Almighty God and the angels, as above, so below, from within. Most of Hashem's angels do not possess that degree of free will. But they are blessed, righteous angels, and servants, and divine warriors. But the Jinn race, the watchers, of the fallen ones of Hasatan, fell to the earth, they integrated with the fair daughters of man. Then we have the hybrids, such as the Anunnaki or Anokim, the Nephilim, the giants. Right? But when I think about, for they even burn their sons and their daughters in the fire to their mighty ones, that is their false gods, which are idols, going against the main commandments of the true living Almighty God, is our Heavenly Father and our Elohim. I think about that classic movie, uh, Beastmaster, this evil tyrant was throwing these children to the fire. I used to watch that when I was a kid in kindergarten. He's this evil, uh, medieval tyrant would pick up these children and throw them into the fire as sacrifices to their demons and their gods. The beast master was the hero in that movie. And I need to go back and I need to go back and watch that movie and kind of catch up on the details. But it just makes me think about that. But how is that any different than today? There are some differences, but in today's modern day society, or what we call society today, in this wicked Babylon system, and it's not just one country or one nation, it's the beast system, satanic world decorum, other countries, other continents, other nations, languages, etc., etc. Why do we dumb down? And not only dumb down, but we even you know, liberate and elevate these things, such as abortion, to legalize abortion, and dumb these things down as, uh, as okay or something good. Mixing all other types of ism and schisms with so called liberalism and conservatism through politics. Got people divided. Got families divorced and, you know, husbands and wives divorced and babies, daddies and baby mamas running around and, you know, innocent children with broken families. We think, oh, well, abortion is a good thing. Call good evil. To call evil good is never a good thing. Now, verse 32, all the words I am commanding you, thus saith the Most High, Yahweh, all the words of Barim that I am commanding you, learn to do it, do not add to it, nor take away from it. So we go back to the previous couple Torah portions in Barim or Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, I believe. It speaks of the same thing. Do not add or take away from the Torah. You look at today's false religions, the majority of false religions and counterfeit Christianities, for example. No, not the true Christianities. I'm not making any blanket statements about the majority of so-called you know, Christian churches. Excuse me. So-called Christian churches or Christianities. I'm not talking about all denominations, but many, if not the majority, are still 
wallowing in dispensation theology. So replacing actual commandments of the Most High, even the teachings of Christ that go back to the commandments of the Father, replace the main Ten commandments with doctrines of man and traditions of man. Now, with that being said, those decent, you know, Catholic or genuine Catholic and Protestant Christians, you know, keep most of the main Ten commandments if you have a basic moral compass and you're a decent person, if you're a good person with a good heart, then you don't steal, you don't bear false witness and deceive people, manipulate people. You don't cheat on your spouse. You don't unjustly murder somebody. So, you know, through Messiah, through Christ, we're covered by grace and we're all bearing our crosses and dealing with life. We're all dealing with life and having to cope with the Babylon system on some scale. But John Word says, do not add or take away. Food for thought. Food for thought. You also have other types of isms and schisms like Judaisms, as opposed to fulfilled Judaism as a way of life. And parallel to that fulfilled Israelite faith, that true early Christian faith. And that's dealing with more of a pure interpretation of Torah. And the Tanakh, which is good. The other Yahudim, the majority, besides fellow messianic, Torah observant Yahudim and Yeshua through Messiah, the other ones all, all respect and reverence the Elohim through the same Hebrew scriptures. So they have more of a pure traditional way of keeping these commandments. They still receive blessings for keeping these commandments, but not according to knowledge. Now, when I say knowledge, I mean according to fulfilled proper knowledge or gnosis. Don't get it twisted and let no one twist my words. Of course, in Judaism, as opposed to Judaism, but different realms of more legit forms of Judaism, besides Messianic Judaism, more legit forms of, of true Orthodox Judaism, all due respect, the ones that don't feed into the other isms and schisms of extreme Zionism, tribalism, etc., etc. I see amongst my fellow brethren, fellow brethren and sister of faith, in reverence to Elohim. But the full gnosis that full, complete knowledge, yes, according to proper knowledge, the same original Hebrew scriptures is key within HaMoshiach, within fulfillment of Amosi or the anointed Christ, or Christos. Because the Levites in your land, unless you know of an ethnic Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Levi, that would be an ethnic Levite, according to lineage. Some have identified some of Yemenite descent, parts of the Middle East. Uh, some might refer to some of the Haitian people, some of the other types of African slaves brought on cargo ships into the West Indies and parts of Haiti, parts of Jamaica other parts of the Caribbean, other parts of the Americas, but mostly of Haitian descent and African descent of the Levites. And that's only according to flesh and blood. Do we have proof of what's DNA to line up with the Aaronic or the sons of Aaron, that is the sons of the first anointed high priest, the biological brother of the great prophet Moshe or Moses, we don't, we'll, you know, think about it. We don't have time for that. The Levites, in these present renewed covenant times, is Yahshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Now, one might say, for the Spence, they're already rebuilding the temple after all this time. 
okay, but they're still in process of supposedly rebuilding the temple, the so-called third temple, right? If you want to know about the true third temple, make that divine connection with the third Jesus or third Yeshua within the true Christ mind, the true mind of Messiah, both spiritually, even metaphysically, to some degree. No blasphemy, 100% right and exact. So, where is the temple or tabernacle today? You have a mini tabernacle or altar in your backyard, whether you live in the city, the county, out in the country, you got your own piece of land, that's all good. But do you have a temple or a little tabernacle? And if so, do you have an ethnic Levite? The sons of Aaron, that lineage from the first Kohen Gadol, or the first anointed high priest, Aaron. Okay, and then even so, do you have enough kosher lambs and rams and oxen and goats? Your burnt offerings, your sin offerings, guilt offerings. Mind you, it's more than obvious. Not to neglect the Levites. Not to neglect the Levites and your surroundings. The ultimate Levites is also the ultimate Yehudaites or Jehudaites. The anointed tribe of Judah, that is Yahshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, as above, so below. But within, he has little Messiah types, little Christ types. As Christ men and God men walk the earth as living epistles living Torahs and divine temples. That's right. Yeshua said, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, said the first advent as Messiah or Hamashiach. So that will destroy the temple and rebuild it within three days. Speaking of his own physical body of flesh and blood, his own personal temple, all of us in his likeness, Ha'alohim, the original Alahayim, Almighty God of the angels. What you see in the likeness is not just physical, but spiritual as well. Chapter 13, verse 1. When there arises amongst you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he or she shall give you a sign or a wonder, verse 2, and the sign or the wonder shall come true of which he or she has spoken to you, saying, let us go after other mighty ones, after other so-called gods, which are false gods and idols, which you have not known, and serve them. Verse 3, do not listen to the words of that so-called prophet, of that so-called dreamer of dreams, for Hashem, the name Yahweh, Jehovah, the Elohim, the Lord your God is only testing you, to know whether you truly love Hashem, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your might, with all the essence of your being. Verse 4, walk after Hashem, your Elohim, and fear Him. Revere Him, and guard and keep His commandments, and obey His voice, and serve Him, and cling to Him. Verse 5, and that so-called prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, is put to death, because he or she has spoken apostasy against Hashem, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim and ransomed you from the house of bondage to make you stray from the way in which Hashem, your Elohim, commanded you to walk. Thus, you shall purge out the evil from your midst. Elah, false the cause. Now, these are Old Covenant times. That is obvious. Many other ones at this point in time now may chime in and say, Brother Spence, this is Old Testament. Even I hear you preach, we're in renewed covenant times. Well, yes, of course we are. And of course you hear me preach that based on actual facts. <clears throat> but there's not anybody there 
day society, the Babylon system, they're to stone you. There's not a Levitical priesthood set up in a tabernacle or temple in our hometowns, in our cities, or countries, wherever we live. So the ultimate high priest is Yahshua. The ultimate Kohen Gadol, that final high priest, is Yahushua Mahamashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our blessed Lord and Savior, and Mashiach, in the first advent. Many of I and I acknowledge the second advent as the one true King of Kings as well, his majesty in Christ, Yeshua, the high priest, the Levites, in our midst, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and the angels, we also say, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the power of the triunity, the power of the trinity, which is the triune, Elohim, one, Allah, one God. Right, so now, when ones actually get caught up in intentional idolatry, not subliminal idolatry, because we live in a wicked society in these last of last days, and wicked Babylon system, that tell us to celebrate this, to celebrate that, you know, according to the season, oh, well, it's this time of the season, it's time to break out these commercialized decorations and celebrate this, or celebrate that with your friends and your family and your children. It's innocent, dumbed down, innocent fun for the whole family. It's just innocent traditions of man, brother. Don't be a legalist. We got to take time to really meditate on these scriptures. Mm -hmm. So, when ones are caught up in adultery or intentional idolatry or intentional satanic witchcraft or sorcery, it's almost like a spiritual death in these present renewed covenant times. A spiritual death. That person may not physically die immediately. They might live a long lifespan, for all we know, but they're spiritually dead, both mentally and spiritually dead. It's almost impossible to come back. I'll say it again, it's almost impossible to come back, but not impossible. You know, Yahweh is merciful. The Mosad Jah is merciful. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son. True repentance. Not false repentance, but true Teshuvah. True metanoia. There is hope in Hashem's grace. Even more so in these renewed covenant times. Let's have to repent. Seek the truth. Those of I and I, we must keep the commandments of the Most High and hold the true testimony of Messiah, as it is written in Revelation, chapter 12, verse 17. Again, in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12, it's called for the endurance of the true set-apart ones, the true righteous ones. Right? Yes. So purge the evil from your midst. Verse 6, once again, with your brother, the son of your mother, the son of your daughter, the wife of your bosom, or your friend, who is your own being, entices you secretly, and says, let us go and serve other mighty ones, which you have not known, neither you nor your fathers. Verse 7, of the mighty ones, these so-called mighty ones, or these false gods of the people which are all around you, near to you, or far off from you, from one end of the earth, the other end of the earth. Verse 8, do not agree with him or her, or listen to him or her, nor shall your eye pardon him or her, or spare him or conceal him. Let's let them know the priesthood, the tabernacle. This is amongst fellow Israelites, because amongst the kingdom of Israel, you know, true ethnic and spiritual Israel in these old covenant times, you could not have somebody who's dabbling with the knowledge of Torah as a Hebrew Israelite 
ethnically or spiritually or religiously and try to mix that in with satanic sorcery and idol worship and witchcraft that's blasphemy it's like a plague if you look at today's present renewed covenant times and messiah but the modern day commercialized christian world not the true christian world i'm not making any blanket statements or general statements at all not commercial christianity and these televangelists talking about their reading from the bible mention a few verses here and there and mixed it in you know they would have mentioned a few verses and mixed that in with palm reading and tarot cards and witchcraft you have to be careful and mind you, there's a major contrast or a major difference in astronomy as opposed to astrology. Astrology is like a manipulation. Even basic manipulation is a type of witchcraft when it comes down to it. So we live in a wicked Babylonian system, no matter what country or state, city or town, or wherever we live, no matter what continents, this world's a chlorum, you know, is all over. Every corrupt government in the far ends of the earth is illegal. Like the great musical prophet and messenger, Bob Marley said. So, digest that today. Many so-called traditions of man through commercialism, they throw in our faces through everyday society, even our next door neighbors and people across the street, people that we work with, right? This is where we have to utilize righteous liberty and spiritual Tai Chi through God's grace, people with Hashem's grace in these renewed covenant times through Christ. Of the mighty ones of the people which are all around you, near to you and far off from you, one end of the earth, the other end of the earth. Verse 8, do not agree with him or listen to him, nor shall your eye fart at him or spare him or conceal him. Verse 9, but you shall certainly kill him. Your hand is first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Verse 10, and you shall stone him with stones until he dies, because he sought to entice you away from Hashem, the ways of the name Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So, yeah, it is the Most High Yahweh, Jehovah, the Most High Jah, as our true Heavenly Father, as our Elohim that has redeemed us. The basic good news gospel, the Brahadasha, as we should say in the Hebrew, the Renewed Covenant, he's redeemed us through Yahshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise ye Jah. Every time, with joy, and to his majesty, the one true king of kings in Christ, let us rejoice in that. He brought us out of the bondage of sin and ignorance and confusion. We cross over as true Christians spiritually, not so much religiously, but spiritually. Yes. Verse 11. And let all Israel hear and fear and not again do any such evil matter as this in your midst. Because we must come out of spiritual bondage, both mental and spiritual bondage and confusion. Repatriation begins with the heart and the mind. These renewed covenant times do more of a spiritual based renewed covenant through Christ. Verse 11, once again, and let all Israel, that poor body of Messiah, that true poor body of Christ, hear and fear, and not again do any such evil matter as this in your midst. Verse 12, when you hear someone in one of your cities, which Hashem, your Elohim, gives you to dwell in, saying, verse 13, some men, the sons of Belial, have gone out in your midst, and led the inhabitants of their city astray, saying, Let us go and serve other mighty ones, mighty ones whom you have not known. Then you shall inquire, search out, 
and ask diligently and see if the matter is true and established that this abomination was done in your midst. And you shall certainly strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, putting it under the ban and all that is in it and its livestock with the edge of the sword. Verse 16, and gather all its plunder into the middle of the streets and completely burn with fire the city and all its plunder before Hashem your Elohim. And it shall be a heap forever, never to be built again. Verse 17, and none of that which is put under the ban is to cling to your hand, so that Hashem turns from the fierceness of his displeasure and shall show you compassion, love you, and increase you as he swore to your fathers. Verse 18, when you obey the voice of Hashem, your Elohim, to guard and keep his commandments, I command you today to do what is right in the eyes of Hashem, your Elohim. Amen. You look at today's society, so government constructs and wicked Babylon system, and Babylon is a one world beast system, no matter what country you live in, it's not just one place or one country. Babylon is confusion. It's that world to chlorine that we must come out of, we must elevate and repatriate, come out of and that mental and spiritual exodus through Christ or through reverence to Elohim. It says, when you obey the voice of Hashem, you love and keep his commandments, keep that full spiritual armor of Elohim through Christ, as we read about through Messiah, as we also read about in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, you must keep his commandments and hold the true testimony of Messiah. The one true King of Yehuda, King of all kings, and the final Levites, that high priest, both the anointed tribe of Judah, or Yehuda and Levi, the kings and priests in which Messiah came, which Christ came. All right? Chapter 14, verse 1. You are the children of Hashem, your Elohim. Do not cut yourselves, nor shave the front of your head for the dead. Cause for the cause. Take a sip of water. Um, this is regarding traditions in ancient Mitzrayim or Egypt and dealing with idol worship, not the original ancient Kemet or early Egyptians. You know, ancient Kemet, that was once a Yahweh or a Jehovah faith-based empire. Yes, once upon a time, even ancient Kemet, stemming from the roots of ancient Kush and Ethiopia, the highlands, was a Yahweh or a Jehovah or Ha'alohim faith-based empire. Things crept in. Idol worship, false gods, mixing false gods once you live in God. Think about that today in this whole spiritual Egypt. Those who live in America, just look at the one dollar bill, the one eyed pyramid. Yes, the one eyed pyramid on the back of your one dollar bills. Think about it. How was this nation built of slave trade, the work of slaves and cotton money to rebuild this Babylonian spiritual Egypt within these last of last days. Think about it. So Romans chapter 12 and 2 say, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world to chlorine with your Babylon systems, the things to meditate upon and think about in that true Christ mind. Um, anyways, when it says do not cut yourselves or shave the front of your head, that's dealing with traditions of idol worship, a lot of ism and schisms that crept into the latter dynasties of Mitzrayim or Egypt under the reign of a wicked pharaoh, not a righteous pharaoh. All these things we have to keep in mind through basic reading comprehension. <clears throat> Salika. 
You should not shave the front of your head for the dead. Worship anything that has to do with worship of the dead and witchcraft and sorcery. Hmm, sound familiar? Within certain you know, mainstream holidays and folly days of, of Babylon system, throughout the fall season and winter seasons. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop right there because if I keep going, I might offend somebody. And I would rather somebody put in their own personal time to think, to meditate, pray about these things and do their own research. So I'll leave it at that. Verse 2. For you are a set-apart people to Hashem, your Elohim, the Lord your God, and Hashem has chosen you to be a people for himself a treasured possession above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Pause for the cause one more time. Again, how many people know through Messiah, even more so through Christ, in these renewed covenant times that we're called to be set apart? We're set apart people. Verse 3. Do not eat whatever is abominable. Verse 4. These are the living creatures which you do eat. These are living creatures for those that choose to eat meat, which we do eat or can eat. The ox, it's your beef, your sheep and goats. Verse 5, the deer and the gazelle and robot, the wild goats and the mountain goats and the antelope and the mountain sheep. Verse 6, and every beast that has a split hoof. Divided in two, chewing the cud amongst the beasts you do eat. Verse 7. But of those chewing the cud, or those having a split hoof completely divided, do not eat. Such as these, the camel, and the hare, and the rabbits, but they chew the cud, but do not have a split hoof. They are unclean for you. Verse 8. And the pig, or the swine, is unclean for you because it has a split hoof but does not chew the cut. You do not eat their flesh or touch their dead carcasses. Don't even touch their dead carcasses with your bare hands or fingertips if you can help it. Verse 9. These you do eat of all that are in the waters and that have fins and scales you do eat or you may eat. Verse 10. And whatever does not have fins and scales, you do not eat. It is unclean for you within the oceans, the waters. Verse 11. Any clean bird, you do eat. Verse 12. But these you do not eat. The eagle and the vulture and the black vulture. 13. And the red kites and the falcon and the buzzard after their kinds. 14, and every raven, that is every raven after its kind. 15, and the ostrich, and the nighthawk, and the seagull, and the hawk after their kinds. 16, the little owl, and the great owl, and the white owl. Verse 17, and the pelican, and the carrion vulture, and the fisher owl. Verse 18, and the stork. The heron after its kind, and the hopo, and the bats, verse 19, and every creeping insect that flies is unclean for you. They are not eaten. There are certain insects that we may eat. But the great prophet and messenger, Johannan, the immerser, or better known, should I say better known as John the Baptist to many people today who speak English. But John the Baptist or Johannan, you know, ate locusts, so kosher insects, ate wild locusts with honey, this time of immersing people and baptizing people, the Hebraic tradition to have a mikvah or mikvah, repentance of sin. <clears throat> so every creeping insect that flies is unclean for you. They are not eaten. Verse 20, any clean bird you do eat. Verse 21, do not eat whatever dies of itself. Give it to the stranger who is within your gates to eat of it or sell it to a foreigner. You are a set-apart people to Hashem, your Elohim, 
Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Verse 22. You shall tithe without fail all the yield of your grain that the field brings forth year by year. And you shall eat before Hashem, your Elohim, the place where he chooses to make his name dwell. The tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil and of the firstlings of your herds and your sheep so that you learn to fear or revere Hashem, your Elohim, at all times. Verse 24. But when the way is too long for you, so that you are not able to bring the tithe, or when the place where Hashem, your Elohim, chooses to put his name is too far from you, when Hashem, your Elohim, is blessing you, then you shall give it in silver, and shall take the silver in your hand and go to the place which Hashem, which the name Yahweh, Jehovah, your Elohim, chooses. Verse 26, and you shall use the silver for whatever your being desires, or cattle, or sheep, or wine, or strong drink, wherever your being desires, you shall eat there before Hashem, your Elohim, and you shall rejoice, you and your household. Verse 27, and do not forsake the Levites, once again, do not forsake the Levite who is within your gates, for he has no part, no inheritance with you. Verse 28, at the end of every third year, you bring out all the tithe of your increase of that year and store it up within your gates. Verse 29, and the Levite, because he has no portion, no inheritance with you, and the sojourner, that's the adopted Israelites, the righteous Gentiles according to flesh is adopted, faithful Israelites, and the fatherless and the widow who are within your gates shall come and eat and be satisfied so that Hashem, your Elohim, does bless you in all the work of your hand which you do. Selah. All right, mind you, before we proceed onto chapter 15, let us reflect on the previous verses and scriptures in chapter 14, in which we just read regarding the basic food laws. That's right. Regarding the basic food laws of the Most High, Yahuwah, Yujah's commandments, or Hashem's commandments, Allah's commandments, that's right. The Bible, the Quran, and so forth. We have basic instructions of how we should live, what we should eat, and what we should not eat to live a better more productive, healthier life. But at the same time, is eating pork, for example, that most people seem to do, just like beef, when it comes to the majority of us who choose to eat meat, you know, we can't judge people, even if it's a fellow born-again brother or sister in Messiah, or through reverence to Elohim, for whatever reason, he or she, because of the influences of modern day worlds of chlorum and societies and commercialism and schisms, etc., etc. You see a commercial on TV of a pork pepperoni pizza. The average picture that jumps up in our heads when we think about pizza is a pepperoni pizza. And yes, I've had my share of chicken or turkey pepperoni pizza it's not bad for those that choose to eat meat it's better to keep it kosher other types say idol is vital much left of respect for those who are the higher discipline of a more strict vegan diet a healthier liberty all the respect but for those that choose to eat meat to get the proper protein in their physical bodies and their vessels are divine temples the most high says, the Most High Jah says in his word, his truth of certain meats that we can and cannot eat or should or should not eat. And with all that being said, I'm not judging anybody who happens to eat pork or eat shellfish or crustaceans. That's your crabs and lobsters and shrimp. Because I grew up with all that, just like most of you. 
the Apostle Paul or Rabbi Shaul in his original Hebrew name teaches about liberty and his teachings through his writings. Many of the Christian church or the majority of more mainstream Gentile Christian churches say the letters of the Apostle Paul. All due respect, it is the writings and documents of the great Rabbi Shaul and the great apostle teaches us about righteous liberty. Don't judge somebody else. Most of my so-called friends and a lot of my actual friends and acquaintances still eat pork. I don't judge them. Me and my lady, you know, we try to keep things out of the house that are not 100% kosher. Sometimes things creep in. I don't eat pork. To speak for myself, I don't eat pork. I don't eat shellfish and crab legs or lobsters or anything like that. But, you know, uh, my lady doesn't usually eat pork, but sometimes she might make accommodations and you go over to somebody's houses and they got the ham on the dinner table. And you know, my lady sometimes will cater to that. Whether it's really the right thing to do or not, don't judge other people. What I'm saying is, it's not so much a salvational issue alone if it's within the oneness of Christ or Hamashiach. See, at the same time, we should not lean too far right and keep ourselves back or hold ourselves back from growing in grace through Christ or through Messiah as we should. We have to grow in grace, but at the same time, we must and should grow in grace. Does that make any sense? So... You know, it's not a salvational issue of ones are born again and repentant to the basic good news gospel through Jesus Christ, through Yeshua, we're born again, we're saved by grace, the atonement, the precious blood of the covenant, Hashem Yeshua, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, hallelujah, praise Jah, every time. But are there consequences for eating certain foods that doesn't really make our body tick? Same analogy of what I made earlier about eating the roadkill of a dead crocodile or alligator on the side of the road. Reptile is not kosher. We just read in the scriptures, in this Torah, what is kosher and what is not kosher, what is clean or what is not clean according to meats, certain animals. All right. So it's not a salvational issue as much as it is how it makes the physical body tick. Our Heavenly Father, the Most High, our wonderful Creator knows what makes our bodies tick. So he says, if you choose to eat meat, that's fine. Eat your beef. Stick with the chicken and beef and fish, kosher fish with scales and fins, not crustaceans. Very simple. However, Will a pork chop save your life if you're starving to death? Yes, yes. we got to put things in perspective. So don't be over legalistic or judgmental. When you come to the basic revelation about not eating pork or to eat pork or to eat. You know, I'm not here to be a legalist. A lot of my fellow brothers in Christ and even an intriguing, very interesting conversation and reasoning I had, even a fellow Rasta brethren. Also happened to be a, a dreadlock Rasta brethren was talking about that. You know, the different dimensions of Rastafari on that level. And you know, he might be one that partake in certain meats that may not be kosher. But other Rastas don't even eat meat. Say, oh, we burn out the debtors. And we don't want to be legalistic or pharisaical either. So we must approve ourselves. As it says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Discipline ourselves, take the time to meditate, study, show ourselves approved. It's in our own personal relationship with the Most High in Christ Yeshua. Our own relationship with the Father through Yeshua HaMashiach, through Jesus Christ, through His Majesty in Christ, should refine us in due time as we grow in grace. I'll leave it at that. Right? Don't think that I'm judging people or I think that I'm holier than thou or so-called self-righteous or another mr know-it-all because i'm saying that i don't eat pork that i rightfully don't eat pork i'm only trying to be reverent to my father's will and his commandments 
especially in Christ. You see the dispensationalism and schisms and these little additives that do not add or take away. They add in the gospel according to Mark, St. Mark, whose Hebrew name is Marcus, but they added Mark chapter 7 with little parentheses and say, thus he made all foods clean when Yeshua or Jesus wasn't even talking about that. You know, Jesus or Isa, a.k.a. Yeshua wasn't even talking about, you know, the pork or, all, you know, unclean foods. He never made that clean. The Father and the Son are one, right? No, he said, do not think because my disciples, my Tamudim or my taught ones are not washing their hands before a meal. As one of your customs, you know, it's not what goes into the mouth, but comes from the heart. He's not talking about eating pork. He didn't say it was okay to eat pork or crustaceans. But with that being said, I encourage ones to pray about these things, do their own research. I'm not coming across as a self-righteous person. I grew up eating pork and shellfish and shrimp, just like anybody else, celebrating the holidays and dotting my I's and crossing my T's. I'm not judging. I'm not seeing that salvational issues. Because with most people, it's not. However, at the same time, to, to whom what is given, much more is required and held more accountable as we grow in grace. If we should grow in grace and get closer to our Heavenly Father in Messiah, especially through Christ, we must put things in perspective. Let's move on to chapter 15, verse 1. At the end of every seven years, you make a release of debts. Verse 2. And this is the word of the release. Every creditor is to release what he has loaned to his neighbor. He does not require it of his neighbor or his brother, because it is called the release of Hashem, release of the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. Verse 3. Of a foreigner, you could require it, but your hand is to release whatever is owed by your brother. Verse 4. Only there should be no poor amongst you, for Hashem does greatly bless you in the land which Hashem, your Elohim, has given you to possess as an inheritance. So the laws and commandments of Torah eliminates extreme poverty in their own community, in their own kingdom, in their own land. But do you see that in America? As much so-called money and technology and all these lovely things that we have, all these so-called delicacies, then you have so much poverty, so much debt. The American government and daughter Babylon is in so much debt. There's so many rich people and spoiled people, yet dirt poor people and poverty and homeless people walk in the streets right here in my hometown, and right here in this area of the village where I live. In the Granite Village of Roanoke City. So, verse 5. Only if you diligently obey the voice of Hashem, that is the voice of the name Yahuwah, your Elohim, to guard to do all these commandments which I am commanding you today. You have a choice. Choose his ways. To choose Yahweh or Yahweh. Choose righteousness, to choose obedience, choose life and not death. You must choose life over death. Verse 6, for Hashem, your Elohim, shall bless you as he promised you, and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Bless us with that much spiritual and financial prosperity, if it is his will. <clears throat> Salika, Most High Jah says, you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And you shall rule over many nations, but they do not rule over you. Verse 7. When there is a poor man with you, one of your brothers within any of the gates in your land, which Hashem your Elohim has given you, do not harden your hearts, nor shut your hand from your poor brethren. Verse 8. For you shall certainly open your hand to him or her, and certainly lend him or her enough for his or her need, whatever he or she needs. Verse 9, 
Be on guard, lest there be a thought of Belial in your hearts, a betrayal or idol worship in your heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release is near, your eyes evil against your poor brother, and you give him knots, caught up in that spirit of greed and selfishness. And he shall cry out to Hashem against you, and it shall be a sin in you. Verse 10. You shall certainly give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this reason, Hashem, your Elohim, the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, your God, does bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hands. Verse 11. Because the poor one does not cease from the land, therefore I am commanding you, saying, You shall certainly open your hand to your brother, to your poor, and to your needy one in your land. Verse 12. When your brother is sold to you, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman is a servant or employee and shall serve you six years, not the same slavery that the people of Israel themselves or the Israelites themselves were in Egypt, talking about servitude to people that have their own business, employment, even we see today in Babylon system. It says, when your brother is sold to you, a Hebrew man or a fellow Hebrew woman, and shall serve you six years, then let him or her go free from you in the seventh year. Once again, the ultimate divine number of seven, Ha'alohim, Almighty God of perfection, completion. It's the Jubilee, the Yobel, 13th. And when you send him away free from you, let him not go away empty-handed. Verse 14. You shall richly supply him from your flock and from your thresh uh, threshing floor, Salika. You shall richly supply him from your flock and from your threshing floor and from your wine press with that which Hashem has blessed you with, give to him. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Mitzrayim, that is a slave in the land of Egypt, and Hashem, your Elohim, ransomed you. Therefore, I, I am Ahaya Yahuwah, commanding this word to you today. Verse 16, and it shall be when he says to you, I do not go away from you because he loves you and your house because it is good for him with you. Verse 17, then you shall take an awl and thrust it through his ear to the door and it shall be your servant forever, your employee forever. It's all love. It's all family. They're all faithful Israelites. One kingdom on earth. Do the same to your female servants. Verse 18. Let it not be hard in your eyes when you send him away free from you. For he has been worth a double hired servant. And you're serving you six years. And Hashem, your Elohim, shall bless you in all that you do. Verse 19. Set apart to Hashem, your Elohim all the firstborn males that come from your herd and your flock. Do no work with the firstborn of your herd, nor shear the firstborn of your flock amongst the animals and livestock in your midst. Now, if you don't happen to have livestock like most of us don't in these renewed covenant times of today's society and technology, etc., etc., if you live on the grid in the city like I do, this does not apply to you. So, whatever does not apply to you is not a commandment you have to keep. Basic reading comprehension for those that try to throw in that dispensationalism. And it's funny because they accuse us, many of I and I and ones like myself, as being legalists. When in actuality, they're the ones being legalists and hypocrites. You know, with this whole hyper grace... You know, traditions, you know, these traditions of man replacing the commandments of God, it's ridiculous. But anyways, verse 19, you know, let it not be hard in your eyes when you send him away free from you. For he has been with you a double hired servant and serving you six years. And Hashem, the name Yahweh, your Elohim shall bless you in all that you do. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Set apart to Hashem, your Elohim, all the firstborn males that come from your herd and your flock. Do no work with the firstborn of your herd, 
for a shear the firstborn of your flock. Verse 20, you and your household are to eat before Hashem, your Elohim, year by year, in the place which the name Yahweh Jehovah chooses, which the Most High Jah shall choose. Verse 21, but when there is any defect in it, lame or blind, or has any evil defect, do not sacrifice it or slaughter it to Hashem, your Elohim. That's the prophetical foreshadowing of Messiah as Hamashiach or Christ in the first advent, that perfect sacrifice. Take upon the tainted flesh as son of man, live a perfect life, perfection, flawless and perfect righteousness. Be that final sacrificial lamb. Verse 22, eat it within your gates, the unclean and the clean alike, as the gazelle and as the deer. Verse 23, only do not eat its blood, pour it on the ground like water. Salah. Right. right. Chapter 16. Guard or keep the new moon, that is the Hebraic new month of Abib, to perform the Pesach or Passover to Hashem, that is the name Yahweh Jehovah, your God, for in the new moon of Abib is the first Hebraic month of the new year. Hashem, your Elohim, brought you out of Mitzrayim by night, brought you out of Egypt from the house of bondage by night. The Passover lamb is Passover lamb, Yahshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ, in these renewed covenant times. And so to keep the Passover in Christ as true Christians and spiritual Israelites. Verse 2, and you shall slaughter the Passover, or you shall slaughter the Pesach to Hashem your Elohim from the flock and the herd and the place where Hashem chooses to put his name. Verse 3, eat no unleavened bread with it. For seven days you eat unleavened bread with it, bread of affliction, that is the matzah, because you came out of the land of Mitzrayim in haste, so that you remember the day in which you came out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the land of bondage, all the days of your life. Verse 4, and no leaven should be seen with you in all your border for seven days, by number of seven. Neither should any of the meats which you slaughter in the evening on the first day stay all night until morning. You are not allowed to slaughter the Pesach or Passover within any of your gates which Hashem, your Elohim, gives you. Verse 6. But at the place where Hashem, your Elohim, chooses to make his name dwell, there you slaughter the Passover in the evening at the going down of the sun, at the appointed time, you came out of Mitzrayim. Now, in for New Covenant times, at the point you became born again, humbled yourself, received the basic good news gospel of Yahshua HaMashiach, the Renew Covenant and good news of Yahushua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, the Son. Come out of that mental bondage, that spiritual bondage of sin. Verse 7. And you shall roast and eat it in the place which Hashem, your Elohim, chooses. And in the morning, you shall turn and go to your tents, to your sukkahs. Verse 8, six days you eat unleavened bread, you eat the matzah, and on the seventh day there is a closing festival to Hashem, your Elohim. You do no work. It's the first and seventh day. So commandments, that options, once we get to that point of growing in grace, there's no rush, I mean... Don't take too much time and be slothful about it. Stay stuck in the same spiritual place as a so-called fellow believer or Christian, you know, 10 to 20 years from now. Grow in grace, but grow in grace. That makes any sense. All right? Count seven weeks. That seven Shavuos for yourself. Begin to count seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain. And yes, the sacrifice of the Passover lamb is Yeshua, is Jesus Christ, of Messiah in the first advent. Only 2,000 years ago, you don't have to sacrifice a lamb. You can eat lamb at your Passover meal if you choose to, but I would not suggest sacrificing an actual lamb. There's no need for animal sacrifices 
that would be blasphemy in today's renewed covenant times. There is no temple. The temple is the body through Christ, the body of Messiah. Right? So, the appointed place. If you have a place of assembly amongst fellow commandment keeping, born again believers in Christ or in believers in Yeshua, you know, come together and worship and fellowship, then go there. If the Ruach HaKodesh or that same Holy Spirit tells you, yeah, go there to celebrate Passover with them, then go. That's the appointed place in your heart that. Yahweh, the Father, or the Most High Jah, is prompting your heart through Messiah and through the Holy Spirit to go. But oftentimes, it could be at your home. The Most High might say, for the next two to five years, I want you to have Passover in your own home and invite other fellow believers, you know, even fellow born-again believers in the basic Good News Gospel as modern-day Christians over to learn about Passover. And so the Passover lamb is Yeshua, or what most people call Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. However, are we still to keep and acknowledge Passover? Yes. As we grow in grace, over the years we can practice with it, kind of dabble with it, but we come to that point, we come to the full reverence and faith, then keeping Passover is no longer an option. It's a commandment and a blessing to keep as well. Not a burden, it's a blessing see blessings for keeping these commandments all these festivals and appointed feasts of the Mohadim of Jah feast point to Christ the Messiah both in the first and second advent as the king of kings right so your Elohim blesses you every day six days you eat unleavened bread on the seventh day there is a closing festival to Hashem your Elohim you do no work. Verse 9, once again, count seven weeks for yourself. Begin to count seven Shavuos or seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain. Verse 10, and you shall perform the festival of Shavuot, that feast of weeks, to Hashem, your Elohim, according to the voluntary offering from your hand, which you give as Hashem, your Elohim, blesses you. Laduja, thanks and praise. Shavuot is also in alignment with the day of Pentecost. According to ancient Israelites, modern day fulfilled Israelites through Christ and true Orthodox Christians. The day of Pentecost, always on a first day or so-called Sunday, they act the Sabbath. Yes. Verse 11, and you shall rejoice before Hashem, your Elohim, you and your son and your daughter and your male servants and your female servants and the Levites, the ultimate Levite and Jehudahite who is within your gates, the Hashem, Yeshua, HaMashiach, the Holy Spirit and the angels and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are in your midst at the place where Hashem, your Elohim, chooses to make his name dwell. Verse 12, and you shall remember that you were a slave in Mitzrayim, an actual slave in Egypt. You shall guard to all these laws. Verse 13, perform the festival of Sukkot, this is the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days after the ingathering from your threshing floor and from your wine press. Verse 14, and you shall rejoice in your festival, you and your son and your daughter and your male servants, and your female servants, and the Levites, and the stranger, and their fatherless, and the widow who are within your gates. Verse 15, for seven days you shall celebrate to Hashem, celebration to the name Yahweh, Jehovah, your Elohim, in the place which Hashem chooses, because Hashem, your Elohim, does bless you, and all your increase, and all the work of your hands, and you shall be only rejoicing. Three times a year, all your males appear before Hashem, your Elohim, in the place which he chooses, at the festival of Matzah, feast of unleavened bread, and at the festival of Shavuot, and at the festival of Sukkot, and none should appear before Hashem empty-handed. Foreshadowing 
the future of Jah Kingdom, the calling of Jah Kingdom. Amen.